In this video, we are going to see inactive stability criterion uh, for a particular problem, which is the open loop gain g of s times h of s is given as k over s square times 1 plus st. Now, we want to find out the range of values of k, okay, for which the closed loop system is stable, okay. When you are given the open loop gain of a system, you want to find out the range of k for which the closed loop system is stable. We can do this by using Nyquist stability criteria. Now, let's define the Nyquist contour using which we actually solve this problem, right? And the typical Nyquist contour looks like this, right? With uh, three sections, which is one, section one, section two, and this is section three. This section one is varying from, this is j omega axis, right? And this is s-plane, which we are considering. This is sigma. Now, for the section one, omega is changing from zero to infinity. And we assume this radius r is tending to infinity, right? And now, this is a usual way of seeing a Nyquist contour, okay? But now, in this case, we have poles at the origin, right? which are going right through this Nyquist contour. In that case, this is a special case where we define a fourth section, right, which bypasses this particular poles at origin, right. This is known as the fourth section, right. Now, totally we have four sections. Now, looking at this equation, now for now, keep this k aside. Now, let's rewrite this k times 1 over s square times 1 plus st, right? Now, let's consider k after some time, okay? Let's take only this equation, right? We know how this polar plot looks for this particular function. Polar plot is plotted when omega is changed from 0 to infinity. It means if you know the polar plot of this particular equation, then we know how the plot looks for this particular number one section, section number one. So let's try plotting that and for section one, the polar plot looks like this, okay? It goes to zero and the directions are like this, which indicates this point is corresponding to omega tending to, I mean, omega equals zero plus. And as omega increases and omega tends to infinity, plus infinity, this is how the plot looks. Now, for section 1, we have done the polar plot of this particular function. Now, for the section number 2, we substitute S with, for section number 2, we substitute S with R times e power j theta, right? And we apply limit R tends to infinity, okay, in that function, fine, g of s times h of s, and we vary theta from, if you look at this, the contour is in this direction, right, so the theta will be plus 90 when it is plus infinity, and when this contour goes to minus infinity, it will be minus 90 degrees, so we vary this theta from plus 90 degrees to minus 90 degrees. If that is the case, if you look at this g of s h of s, now let's substitute these values. We'll have 1 over r square times e power j 2 theta, right? And if you look at this equation and substitute s with r e power j theta, we know that r is tending to infinity, then we can neglect this one term, right? So we can rewrite this as r times e power j theta. Fine. Now, if we rewrite this, we'll have 1 over r cube times e power minus j 3 theta. And irrespective of whatever is the angle here, when you apply a limit r tends to infinity, the magnitude becomes 0. Okay? Magnitude becomes 0. Now, if you look at this particular thing, for this whole section number 2, 
the point which you are going to have corresponding to that is going to be a point at origin. Let me take a different color to dis distinguish this. Okay, this is where the point is going to be. Okay. Now, for so we are done with the section two. Now coming to the section three, the plot looks exactly mirror image. One and three will be mirror images because the omega is changed only with respect to sign. That is, section one was with plus omega change and section three is with minus omega, right? So in that case, we are going to have an exact mirror image of this. Okay, it may not look exact mirror image, but it is supposed to be. Okay, it's a problem with the drawing, right? Okay, this is how the plot looks, and it goes to infinity, right? Even this one. Now this is how the directions look. Now, now comes the important point. Okay, now let's take the fourth section. In fourth section, we consider, uh, let's say R1. Okay, R1 when I mean that is the radius towards this inner circle. R1 times e power j. Let's say theta again. Okay. In this case, you apply limit R1 tends to 0. Okay. If you substitute this R1 times e power j theta in this equation, which is given, let's say if you substitute that, you will get again R1 square e power j 2 theta times 1 plus, if you substitute as with R times e power j theta and R is tending to 0, so you can neglect this st term. So essentially it will be 1. Right? So if you rewrite this, we'll have 1 over r1 square times e power minus j 2 theta. Okay. Now if you rewrite this, we'll have, if you apply this limit r1 tends to 0, you'll have infinity as a magnitude and the phase angle is minus 2 theta. Right. And now theta we know is changed. We are actually going in this direction, right, for this fourth section. In this direction right in that way the angle at this particular point will be minus 90 degrees if you substitute minus 90 degrees here you'll have when theta is minus 90 degrees suppose say this is 5 5 will be equals to 180 degrees when theta equals to plus 90 degrees that is at this particular point okay 5 is going to be minus 180 degrees right so when theta is 0, in between you will have phi also 0, right, corresponding value. Now, as you know the values and the magnitude is changing, we know that the plot will be continuous, right? So the plot ended here when this was the corresponding point, right? As we are changing from here to here, we are going to have an infinite radii, okay, circle kind of a thing. It will change like this, okay, and this plot is going to be continuous and it's a closed function, okay, a closed counter because we are plotting for a closed counter. Now it becomes like this, okay. Now let me rub this off in order to have this clear, mm, okay. The arrow mark directions will be like this, okay, in this direction because it's a continuation one, right? And the shape of the plot doesn't matter because it's only the number of encirclements that matters, okay? Now, the minus one will be here, right? Now, when we have minus one there, now what is the number of encirclements n? We know the formula for this n equals z minus p. And what is p? p is the number of poles of the open loop transfer function. Okay, p is poles of open loop transfer function, which are also equal to number of poles of okay, poles of characteristic equation, which is one plus g of s h of s, and zeros z here is nothing but the zeros of characteristic equation which are nothing but poles of okay closed loop transfer function okay now this p is poles of open loop transfer function 
covered by this particular Nyquist counter. So now, can you tell me what is the number of poles present in or covered by this Nyquist counter? Here, it would be 0, right? Because these two poles are actually excluded by taking a small detour, right? And this pole, we know that it is s equal to minus 1 by t, which will be in the left of fs plane. So p will be equal to 0. And number of encirclements, we know if we draw a line and see how many uh, arcs are cutting, we know it is 2. And it is plus 2 because it is in the clockwise direction. Right? When we defined n, we defined n as clockwise direction. Right? So 2 equals z minus 0. It means z equals 2. When we have z equals to 2, it means okay, the number of zeros of characteristic equation are 2, which is equal to number of poles of closed loop transfer function present in the right half of S plane are 2, which means the closed loop system is going to be unstable. right? For all the positive values of k, for sure, if we have this, the system we can say directly that it is unstable. Okay? It will be unstable system for all positive values of k. And we will see in the next video and for the coming videos the special cases when k value is considered to be negative. Okay? k value negative and k value positive are different because when k is negative we have to consider the phase included by that negative sign also which will, which will be 180 degrees right so in this problem we will conclude for k positive values the system is unstable and in the coming video we will see if k value is negative how does the plot look okay thanks for watching the video